either. Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes, where I, the good old boy, will be making recipes from RecipesThatCrock.com that has almost 400 recipes on the site. Earlier I had been saying over 250. Technically I was right, but it's really almost close to 400 dishes now. So go over to the site and check it out. There's plenty to choose from, one heck of a menu. And today we're going to do a quickie for you. Today is going to be a very simple, simple thing that we're going to do right here. And we are going to make... What's it called? <laughs> make ahead ground beef. Make ahead ground beef. Because we're going to make it ahead of some recipes that we're going to be featuring. And it's very, very simple. It's really easy to do. And all it takes is a six-quart slow cooker. Four pounds of ground beef. Now, you could use just regular ground beef like you get from the store if you want to use frozen ground beef it's whatever you want to do uh, we get ours from some friends called the Mayhans who are some local farmers here in Indiana Farm Wife Crafts and that's right Pro big props to Sarah Mayhan at farmwifecrafts.com and uh, she's really cool her husband is awesome awesome farmer they got a great family and they um, they locally sell uh, some beef and we bought a quarter beef the other day stocked the freezer full and we have been enjoying a lot of really yummy beef recipes from it and today we're going to use four pounds of their ground beef uh, that's four pounds frozen listen that's frozen we're going to use two chopped onions and four three to four um, Three to four. <laughs> I can't say it right. It's there's okay. A, there's an ant on our counter. Oh Ooh. no. I might have been an uncle. I don't know. Spring's here. Ants are here. And those stupid little ladybug beetle thingies. Y'all have a problem with those where you're at? Because we do around here. How about a few tips down in the comments below of how to get rid of ladybugs? We need three to four cloves of minced garlic, or we're going to use some freeze-dried garlic so I'm using four teaspoons of minced garlic you need one 10.5 ounce can of beef consomme and then salt and pepper to taste now let me tell you before I start to put this together beef consomme has salt in it and so when you go to salt and pepper your beef just realize that you might not put as much salt in as you think you would uh, and you can always salt it later and it'll be just fine so I'm gonna take my four packages of ground beef and it's going to be kind of like a little puzzle putting this all in there because ground beef doesn't mush up or frozen ground beef doesn't mush up so you got to put it in there just right strategically or as I call it you jam it down in there just like that <laughs> and then top it with your onions and your a garlic and I went on the high end of the garlic because we dig garlic around here. We gar like it. Mm. And then your beef consomme right on the top. And then I'll use my non-beef hand for the salt. Like I said, I'm going to put in probably about no more than a teaspoon of salt on top of that. Plus or minus. And before I touch my pepper, I'm going to dry my hand off there. <coughs> Um, yes. it's blinking and warning me and it has zero minute flashing so did you I'm afraid it's going to stop recording on you is it still recording? right now it is Okay. Um, but it says zero minute we better hurry and then some pepper I like seven grinds don't know why but seven is my number we're having a day, aren't we, Pud? We're having a day. <laughs> We're having a day. Am I recording? No. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we had a little technical glitch with the camera there. We're all good now. But now everything is in our slow cooker, our onions, our beef, our garlic, our consomme, our salt, and our pepper. So all you do with it now is find the lid, pop it on there, 
and then turn it on to high since I have frozen ground beef for two hours and come back in a couple hours and that's when you're going to want to take your handy dandy mix and chop and chop it up with the hiccups sorry <laughs> oh bye. You take your handy dandy mix and chop and you chop it up as fine or as chunky as you want. We were going to make tacos today. <laughs> this is where we have our little confessional about just how perfect we're not. And so I went ahead and pre-made some ready-made ground beef and I chopped it up real fine with the mix and chop, you know, because, you know, with tacos, you want to have, like, a finer beef tip. No, you... I, I do, I do. Um, but, you know, like Taco Bell, or if you go to a nice Mexican restaurant, their beef is all ground up really fine with the onions and everything to put in there. And so, back here in this slow cooker, I made a bunch of ground beef, just like we did here. Um, and then my wife and my beautiful daughter, they put together this uh, taco mix that was beans and onions and peppers and it smelled so good and it was in a really cool vintage slow cooker from my mother-in-law and then <clears throat> it fell off the counter. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's what it looked like. <laughs> That's tragic. <laughs> Except for the dog, the dog thought it was great because he got it to he got to it before we could clean it up. So, anyway, I'm going to show you now by unplugging this and moving it out of the way. I'm going to show you oh, a little shaky shaky there. I'm going to show you what it looks like now. Like I said, I've already taken my mixing chop and ground all this up. Just like that. You can see it's all all mixed up, ground down. The onions have cooked down. The beef is all cooked. Hey, Pud, yeah. I'm going to be that um, food police again and tell you to get the bowl from the raw ground beef off before you start messing with the cooked food. Okay, food police. Yes, sorry. I don't like tummy aches. And you might wash your hands a little bit. But this is what it looks like, all ground up, mixed up, cooked down, and ready to go in whatever dish you want to go in. But as you can see from this camera, it's a little soupy because you've got the fat and the moisture has rendered itself out of the meat as well as the moisture that comes from the onions. So it's really watery. I'll set this right here. So what I'm gonna do is learn from previous mistakes. <laughs> Actually, off camera, I grabbed a hold of it. And hurt myself. <laughs> that was a previous mistake. Put on my Muppet gloves. The weigh like five pounds. Wow. And I'm gonna strain this out real quick. I've got a strainer over here, clean, uh, clean strainer in the sink. So, as you're watching my hiney, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm just simply straining out the beef. Kind of getting all the moisture out of there, all the water. Look at that. You see that? So much water's coming out of there. We can't really, but oh. we believe you. We hear it. It's raining meat. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's raining meat. <laughs> it's still going. Still dripping. A lot of drippings there. I reckon you could probably use those drippings for, for something if you wanted to, but... Oh yeah, that's the other thing that, that makes it watery is all that beef consomme, which gives it the beefy flavor. Or, I should say, enhances the beefy flavor of the meat. We'll put that back in our really hot... Okay, that, that watery sound you were just hearing wasn't from the meat, that was my dog licking or drinking out of the <laughs> He heard the you bowl. say it's raining meat, and he's in here. But now, that's what it looks like. Finally ground up. Oh. Uh, found a couple chunks. No, I think but we're But that's fine. what it looks like all ground up. And I'm going to give it a taste. Like I said, you want to hold back on the salt because of the consomme. Yes, I know I'm picking from the bowl. It's my house. I can do that. 
and I put about the same amount of salt in that as what I did in our other slow cooker. Are you waving? I'm now? being attacked. I'm sorry. And that's those, those old, those ladybugs. I know, I got attacked. <laughs> but anyway, in the comments below, seriously, let us know how we get ladybugs. We're sick of them. They're bugging us. <laughs> but I held back on the salt a little bit because the consomme put maybe about a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons of salt in there. And I think it's fine. The beef consomme makes it a little, little meatier flavor. Onions and garlic really flavor it up as well and, we, and it's very versatile what would you put this in besides the tacos right. that we were in memoriam gonna have <laughs> well we like to scoop out about two cups of uh ground beef and put in a freezer bag um, and then that should with four pounds that should produce about four bags of okay. that and so then that would be the equivalent of a pound of ground beef in any kind of casserole. I, I swear this bug will not leave me alone. Um, it's bugging her. <laughs> now, honey, I have a question. Yes. I have a qu question from the audience. Yes. Would you just take it straight from the slow cooker, put it in a bag, and then put it in the freezer? No, no, no. No? Why no. not? Because, one, it's going to be hot. And you're putting hot things in a plastic bag, and that's probably gonna, you're probably going you would get burned. Um, <laughs> and then um, also, it produces a lot of steam, uh, which would produce a lot of ice crystals. And so, if you don't like freezer burn, which most people don't, that's one of the reasons why things would do that. Um, also. If you put warm things in your freezer, then whatever it's laying on or beside is going to raise the temperature of that, and that's not real. That won't make the food police happy, or the food safety police. I'm not a food policer. So what we do is we dump it out on the tray like what you've got there, and let it cool before we put it in the bags and put it in the freezer. That's right. But going back to your original question, oh my gosh. Do y'all see that beetle? I can see it from back here. Ain't nothing I can do he about it. He won't this. leave me alone. Um, no, uh, what we use this, you could use it, if you make lots and lots of tacos, you could go on and season it with your taco seasoning if you wanted. Mm -hmm. But we use it in everything from spaghetti to tacos to beef stroganoff to soups. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> he really is coming after me. Um, beef tacos, uh, like any kind of casserole, Pizza, we make pizza. It just makes it it saves you the step from having to brown your ground beef. You've already got it ready made. Ready yes. made ground beef. Yes. So what I will do, I guess you could let it cool off in the slow cooker, but if you're trying to you're trying to speed this stuff up, you want it uh, you want it done quickly, take it and put it into a cookie sheet just like that. Give it a little jiggle. <laughs> and then spread it out. Yep. And just let it sit for a few minutes to let it cool down. And then once it's cooled down, put it in your freezer bags and freeze it. How long do you think it'll keep? Probably what? Uh, we usually go through ours pretty quickly, but um, I would say it at least would keep for a month um, or two. Um, the longer it stays in there, the more more it susceptible will, it is to be freezer burnt freezer burnt or it just will it will degrade in flavor a little bit so but we go through it so fast and so that's like today we're doing eight pounds which we'll cook through several of those today but we're doing eight pounds to stock back up our freezer you'll just find that it's easy i mean even if you're like you're someone who likes hamburger helper or something like that this is just really a quick way to already have that browning step done yep and it's well flavored too. Like I said, that was really, really good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I'm sure you're gonna see some future recipes where we've taken this beef plus the other one we got cooking and, uh, and show them in recipes. And hopefully one of those recipes someday will be tacos. <laughs> yes, Miss Ad was very disappointed that all of her hard work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, went all over the floor. So, but that is a simple recipe. A uh, really quick and easy way to make some ground beef ahead of time. And if you like what you see, give us a subscribe there uh, down on this video and check us out at youtube.com slash Mikey 
And uh, also give us a like at Recipes That Crock over on Facebook, as well as Good Old Tunes with Good Old Boy over on Facebook as well, where we do recipes as well as music and other, other fun things from the family. And of course, check us out at RecipesThatCrock.com and uh, you can see our close to 400 recipes now on the site. <laughs> we want to thank you guys again for watching. We'll keep cooking and you keep watching and all will be well. Bye.